In this video, we'll review how easy it is to remove and replace the most commonly installed types of HAPE HLS 9000 handle sets usually supplied by high quality door manufacturers. First, be certain that you are in fact working with the famous HAPE HLS 9000 multipoint lock. You can be certain if you see the trademarked symbol on the side of the high quality stainless steel lock and back plates of the handle sets. Next, you will need the following tools, a Phillips head screwdriver, the proper sized hex wrench for the handle set screws, usually 3mm, or the quick fit release tool originally provided with your hardware. Once you have identified the product, remember to only work with the door in the open, unlocked position and be certain not to close the door until you have tested the operation. Begin by removing the cylinder from the door as demonstrated in our earlier video. After the cylinder has been removed, start by confirming that you have a standard handle set by looking for a stainless steel set screw either on the side or bottom of the handle. If there is only a small hole and no set screw inside, you probably have a quick fit connection which will be addressed shortly. Using the proper sized hex wrench, unscrew the set screw from the inside handle to the point that the handle will slide off of the handle shaft. This is a fairly tight fit, designed to make certain that the screw will not work loose over time. The screw was patented to use a unique head shape that would be captured in the split shaft to hold it in place over many years of use. This is what the screw looks like, so you can see why it may feel tight in removing the screw. Once the screw is removed from the inside handle, pull the handle off of the shaft, and pull the other handle with the shaft still attached out of the lock. Be careful as some handles utilize O-rings for added water and air resistance and you do not want to lose these. If you do not have the traditional set screws, you are probably dealing with a new patented quick fit handle system. This is what it looks like. Removal of this handle is much faster but you do need the release tool shown here. To remove the inside handle, Locate the access hole on the inside handle. Insert the tool parallel to the face of the door, rotating the tool while gently pulling on the inside handle, sliding it off of the shaft. Once it is removed, pull the outside handle and shaft out of the lock. Now that both handles are off, you can now carefully remove the backplate screws from the interior backplate and gently take away both backplates and gaskets from the face of the door. There are a few backplate options where there's a cover over the screws that will need to be removed to get to the screws. We'll look at one of these examples next. Be careful when removing backplates that paint is not adhered to them. This sticking to the backplate may peel from the door and leave an unsightly scar. If you have the E1800 stainless steel trim, you will also need to have a small straight slotted screwdriver to remove the back plate cover from the underplate. Remove the handles first by unscrewing the set screw on the inside handle. Once this stainless steel set screw has been removed, remove the inside handle from the shaft and pull the outside handle and shaft out of the lock case. Once the handles have been removed, look at the bottom of the E353 trim plate you'll find a small slot on both the internal and external back plates. Using the blade of the screwdriver as a wedge, pop the back plates off of the stainless steel underplates and remove the covering back plates. Be careful that you do not damage the finish on the surface of the door by using some cushioning element between the screwdriver and the door surface. Once again then, using your Phillips head screwdriver, Remove the screws from the underplate and remove them and the gaskets from the door. Reinstalling the handles and back plates are essentially reversing the processes we discussed earlier for removal. In each case, the back plates are installed first over the supplied gaskets. In the case of the E1800 handles, the underplate is installed over the gasket. Do not yet fully tighten the mounting screws, but gently snug them in place. Next, you will install the handles. If you are reinstalling the same handle sets, push the pre-mounted exterior handle through the back plate or under plate. 
Remember to reinstall O-rings if you remove them earlier. If you have a handle with a mounting screw, make certain that the screw head is aligned with the correct side of the shaft. Now push the interior handle onto the shaft while holding the exterior handle in place and tighten the screw till the head of the screw is at least flush with the handle. Now check to make sure all parts are in alignment by depressing the mishandling device with your thumb and lifting the handle to engage the multipoints and then retract them by depressing the lever. If everything functions correctly, snug the mounting screws to the panel. If there is some binding, loosen the mounting screws and adjust the back plates to allow for free movement of the handles. This could be an indication that the original door preparation for your trim was not precise. Once the lock operates correctly, snug down the mounting screws. If you have the E1800 handle sets, now is the time to snap the stainless steel backplate covers in place. You will now reinstall the cylinder as shown in our previous cylinder video or the supplied instruction sheets. After the cylinder installation, once again test the unit by depressing the mishandling device. Confirm the proper functioning by lifting the handle to engage the multipoints and then extending and retracting the deadbolt with either the thumb turn or the key. Congratulations! You've successfully removed and reinstalled your Hoppe HLS 9000 handle set. For further support and information, explore our website at www.us.hoppe.com.